creatures of the night. It's Saturday night, and that means it's I for fighting. Uh, we had tag team action starting off the show with FTR versus BCC. Our boy Willie Yuta is back, and Claudio Castagnoli, they are teaming up to go against Dax and Cash Wheeler. Now, is this match a good match? Yes, it was. We had a 20-minute time limit that is very important for me to bring up. And match is going, and I'm not going to lie, it does feel like it's dragging a little bit until we actually get a reminder that we're about five minutes away from the time limit. And I'm just like, oh, okay, that's going to be interesting. It's all right. I don't want this match to end up in a draw. I want to see FTR lose fair and square, getting pinned, or one of them bitches tapping out. Doesn't matter to me. But then here we have one more minute, and I'm just like, okay, I'm a little bit worried now. We may not actually get one of the FTR members to tab or get pinned. Then here we have, while Claudio put Cash Wheeler into a submission, going from sharpshooter to crossface and, and, and putting his arm all the way to the back of his freaking head and everything. But boom, here we have the bell rings and the time's up. Now, the crowd, they're not feeling it. They're not laying like the crowd from last week. They were actually making noise this week. And they were booing because they wanted to see somebody clearly win. So then, everybody's like, five more minutes. FTR is just like, yeah, let's go back in the ring and do this for five more minutes. Referee looks like, hey, don't matter to me, whatever you guys want to do. But then, here comes... Brandon Cutler, of all people, in that musty-ass tracksuit. This is the only thing he owns to wear, you guys. So he's always wearing just this outfit every single time we see him. He comes out there and he goes, well, I'm here on behalf of the Young Bucks. You know, we have plans for tonight. And the plan was for your match was 20-minute time limit. So don't come over here crying for extra time. Um, long story short, they end up snatching him up. And Claudio gives him a giant swing. And here we do have our boy Willie Yuta who gives him a drop kick at the end of the giant swing. And people are happy about that. Now, nothing we can do at this point. They've already... All the little fiasco going on with, uh, what's his name, Brandon Cutler. They could have been back in the ring wrestling, but they lost that opportunity. So, Claudio's just like, hey, anytime y'all want to run it back, we're running back. Now, I'm going to say this. If you think about what's going on now, Willie Yuta just got back with, and he's cheating up with Claudio. Kind of can't afford to lose. And then we have FTR who opened their big mouths last week talking about they're not done with the Young Bucks. So now it's just like, shit, well, since you're not done, we can't have y'all losing to look bad. So I kind of get why they didn't, I don't know, I kind of get why they had a draw, but I'll take it this far. If we go back months ago, they did the very same thing with um FTR and BCC but this time it was Claudio and John Moxley where they had them have a match on Dynamite it ended up in a draw and then they ended up facing each other at the pay-per-view and to me I'm just like oh so we're, we're literally going back to the same same thing that y'all did with BCC a few months ago this time we taken out Moxley and we put in a wheeler to the con I'm bored so we have Lexi backstage with our boy, Kyle O'Reilly. He has a match with Orange Cassidy. Surprise, surprise, this is the main event. Okay, sure. Now, they're talking about that match, and here it comes the Undisputed Kingdom interrupting Kyle O'Reilly TV time. And they're basically here to say, hey, you know, we've been watching you. You've been doing great. But if you need help, we're here. You know, let us know if you need anything. Uh, Kyle doesn't really seem to be running to get any help from them. But at least there's a possibility that, hey, these guys, they still want to be friends with him. And if anything, he can rely on his friends because people like Orange Cassidy, who has no friends, have no one to rely on. Up next, we have Chris Statlander versus Robin Renegade. This match was a minute and 30 seconds. If that, I'm probably being nice to give it that much. Now, I can't stand squash matches. But I was okay with this. My my girl Robin is better than better than that. However, I was okay with this. They have uh, Chris Statlander with a whole new graphics when she comes out, new new theme song and everything. Solely doing all the talking. That's not going to change. But it looks absolutely great, and I'm with it. I'm with it, and I'm just like you know, Chris Statlander is a really great wrestler. She's known for being really strong. I could kind of buy it if she have a squash match with somebody. So I took it for what it was. After the match, 
Uh, she ends up kicking out Robin from the ring so that Stoltley can talk some more. And Stoltley, long story short, uh, Chris Statlander will be in the Owen Hart um, uh, um, tournament thing for the ladies. Now, she's looking to make history to be the first AEW woman to have held the TBS title and the AEW women's title. So I'm just like, okay, that's a possibility. If she wins, she gets a title shot to go against whoever it is that has the women's title. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be Tony Storm at that point. And actually, I would totally would like to see her be the first person to hold both of those titles. Now, right after this, though, uh, Will Nightingale is coming into the building. She looks so cute. Whoever it is that's doing the makeup over there on these girls, Lord have mercy, freaking amazing. Uh, she pulls up in the building, and um, Lexi lets her know about what's going on. And then here is Will Nightingale who says, oh, well, that's interesting because I'm also going to be in the tournament, too. And I'm just like, that's really great. You're not going to win it back to back, right? Because I would not like to see that happen at all. I love you, though, Willow. Up next, we have Dustin Rhodes versus Johnny TV. Ty Valkyrie, ringside two. You know how it is. Whenever Johnny's out there, Ty is out there. You know, you know she's with her man. And um, as usual, they're putting their tongues down each other's throat. Ugh. Ugh. Can't stand it. Anyway. Um, great match. I don't know if they've actually ever had a match before, to be honest with you. Not that I could remember. I would say at times things were off between them, but overall, not a bad match. I wasn't really sure who was going to take the win here. To me, I'm looking at both of them and I'm just like, you know, they, they are both veterans. They've been um, doing this for a really long time. Um, Johnny has been taking some L's. Dustin, he comes whenever they remember he's still employed. So, I don't know. It didn't really matter to me. But Dustin ends up taking the win here. And then he gets on the mic. He gets on the mic. And his chest is, like, freaking purple. Like, I, I don't know what it is. But it, he just looked... It, it was, like, purple-reddish color. And he seemed very winded after that match. And here I am thinking he's going to do the, oh... I might retire type of speech and then go on to say, well, I'm not retiring yet, motherfuckers. I still got enough left in the tank. But then he's kind of sort of making it seem like maybe that might be the case. He's thinking everybody, even thinking the cameraman. If you're at the point where you're thinking the cameraman, um, you might have a foot out the door. But then he goes on and talks about John, Jack Perry and how, Jack Perry, you put your crusty fingers on my boss, and I don't appreciate that. I love AEW, and I was just like, oh, my God, another ride or die for AEW guy once again. And long story short, because this was actually really long, uh, Dustin is going to be facing Jack Perry next week on Dynamite. I'm, I... I didn't, I didn't know we wanted this. <laughs> I did not know we wanted this. As great as both of these guys are, I had no clue we wanted this. And then he goes on to say, oh, Jack Perry, when you, um, when, when you left after all in, uh, we missed you. And I was like, who the fuck is we? Did, who was we? I don't know who Dustin was talking about, but the, the few of y'all that missed Jack Perry while he was gone, you know, here it is. Your boy's back and he's going to be going against Dustin. And to be honest, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. Now, after this, though, we have the premier athletes, uh, Tony Meese, Lord have mercy, those abs, and Ari Davari versus two local jobbers that it looked like they picked up from the parking lot before the show. Um, it was a squash, not even two minutes in the ring. And I'm just like, the premier athletes are really great. And this is the first time uh, I actually remember seeing these two on collision, maybe even ever. And this is what we do, a squash match with people y'all picking up from outside. I didn't like that. Like, if you're not watching Ring of Honor, if you're not familiar with these guys, then you don't know how great they are in the ring. So when you see them in the ring for less than two minutes, you're not getting a chance to truly understand who these guys are. So I didn't appreciate that. I really didn't care for it. They end up winning. And honestly, I wish there was a lot more. But if this is starting to have these guys be featured more on AEW, I guess it's a start. I just didn't care for it. Now, after this, we have a, a video 
um, of a little promo from Scorpio Sky. And Scorpio Sky talking about he's going to be our hero. He's going to be our voice. And he's going to be our champion. And, like, the, the vibe of this promo is giving very much. I'm a student of the learning tree. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I'm buying this. You're so cute, though. But I don't know if I'm buying all of this. Whatever the situation is, um, if they can scrap it now before he returns, um, that would be great. That would be great. Up next, my eyes did deceive me. We actually had a second women's match tonight. We had Lady Frost versus Tony Storm. And I thought that was so interesting because I was like, I've been saying this for the longest. Like, y'all have time to give two women's matches. Sure, Satlander's match was a squash, but it's great to be able to see these ladies more than once a night. So I'm glad that they did that. These girls are really, really great. Tony Storm, holy moly, like she is so into this character. I absolutely love it. Lady Frost is um, a great wrestler too. However, I can't tell you the last time I actually seen her win anything. She's always, always losing. But hey, she's she's getting that TV time and she looks great. And uh, Mariah May is ringside. And man, she is giving like Ariande Grande um uh, Barbie vibes, whatever it is. She just looks really, really amazing. And you're looking at her ringside and you're just like, well, I can see why Tony and them is fighting for you. You're so pretty. Luther, he's there as well. They're not paying him any mind. Yes, Tony Storm ends up taking the win. She's celebrating with Mariah after that. And oh man, Luther is not happy about it at all. The way that Luther is looking at Mariah I can tell that Luther probably has some plans. Probably has some plans. Like, if we don't see Mariah no more, we know who to look for. So now, interesting, we have Lexi backstage and Shane Taylor Promotions and Top Flight. And I'm just like, okay, this is interesting. They got all the black guys in one room at once. What's going on? Um, it So, okay. They are having, well, I don't know if it was a feud, but the other day, um, Shane Taylor basically was calling out Top Flight Action and Dreddy. And um, so what we're getting first here is Dante Martin versus Lee Moriarty. Whoever wins that match will also um, be part of the TNT ladder match. So that's going to be interesting to see Dante win that. Uh, cool. It's going to be a great match. I really do think so. Um, however, this is what I was saying, I think, yesterday, where it was like, okay, you have these trios. You can be doing singles matches with them, tag matches with them, and trios eventually. Like you, there's quite a few combinations of matches you can make out of all these guys. So I'm appreciating that we're starting off somewhere. So Dante and um, uh, Lee Moriarty first. But then Shane Taylor goes on to say um, a nice thing or two about Ashton and Dreddy, almost as if like he wants to pin them against each other or whatnot. And I'm just like, oh, okay, he's trying to play a little bit of a mind games. Cool. Do I see Ashton and Dreddy joining STP? I don't. But I would love to see uh, Ashton and Dreddy in top flight winning some gold, like Trio's titles. That would be lovely. After this, oh, God. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Hook and Samoa Joe, they are backstage and they're walking. And it looked like they're walking at a school. And I'm just like, where are they? Why do they look like they're at a school and Samoa Joe is walking with his son throughout the hallway? And he's like, you know, if your teacher tell me that you were being bad, I'm going to whoop your ass in front of the teacher. And I'm just like, okay, this is interesting. They open the door. And when they open this door, the premier athletes are there and Mark Sterling. They end up proceeding to beat up the premier athletes. And then they snatch up Mark Sterling, who doesn't do anything. Who wouldn't even hurt a fly? They snatched him up and um, basically saying, oh, look at me. This is what we did to you. And I'm just like, oh, okay, interesting. But at the same time, I don't know if I'm tripping, but I know I heard shabbat's translator or or my tripping like i thought i heard shabbat's translator as if shabbat was holding the camera or something and um at the end i heard the the, the translator talking about men uh, men don't cry in wrestling something like that and i'm just like wait a minute shabbat is there like what's going on i don't know i don't know what all that was about what's going on with hook and samoa joe i have no clue no clue at all after this we do have uh Danny garcia versus tate mayfair's 
He is um, an international wrestler uh, who's making a name for himself. So he comes on over to AEW to lose. And that's what always happened. When they advise you, oh, well, you lose. Um, the match was great, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. I really couldn't get too much into it. It was pretty short. They might bring him back again. We'll see. Not sure. Um, Daniel Garcia, though, gives us um, quite a few pumps after that match. He's on the barricade, and he's thrusting those hips, pretty much letting the ladies know that everything is all right with, with that area of his body, and I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. After this, though, ooh, we have a video package of... Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. Y'all know I've talked about him before. Very technical wrestler. He is a heel too. Oh God, he's one of those guys that are just flawless to me in the ring. When I see Zack, I am just 100% focused. He is so great in the ring. He's definitely going to be brought to this forbidden door situation. Who's he going to go against? Not really sure. Um, I think we're, pro oh, I think we're looking at an Orange Cassidy. Maybe. I think that's the route that they're going. Whoever it is, y'all have to have this forbidden door open with our boy, Zack Sabre Jr., in it. Like, if he's not in it, you're wrong, Tony Khan. You're absolutely wrong. So now, main event, Orange Cassidy versus Kyle O'Reilly. This doesn't scream main event to me, to be honest with you, but whatever. Everyone else that is usually doing the main event stuff are home or somewhere else. Um... Great match. We had like close to 20 minutes of these two in the ring. And Kyle O'Reilly, man. Okay. Orange Cassidy wins. And to be honest, I don't see why. Like, why couldn't Kyle O'Reilly take this win? I'm telling you, every time we see Kyle in the ring since he's been back, you see so much improvement. You really see like, okay, this is somebody who really, really got a bright future ahead of them. And Orange Cassidy, he's always winning. I know he gets his ass whooped here and there, and, and he has lost all his friends. But it's just like, at what point are we just going to look at the situation and be like, okay, well, Orange Cassidy, he, he's he's going to win again. Maybe we should just give it to Kyle. It felt really weird because during this match, we had Roderick in the kingdom. They are um, sitting next to the fans, front row. And they're cheering for their boy and everything. And I'm just like, oh, I think I know where we're going with this. At the end of this match, um, they're going to end up stomping out Orange Cassidy. And Kyler Riley is going to be back with his friends. So that's what I kept in mind throughout the match. And I was just waiting on that. Because I was just like, I don't see Kyle taking this. But I do believe out of the two, he could really use this win. Because Orange Cassidy is definitely one of the biggest dudes up in that co company. And if he would have taken a win like that, that would have been great. But then I saw it that if he lost, then he can use that, you know, pent up aggression and take it out on him along with his friends. And you know what? I'm cool with that. I'm cool with seeing Orange Cassidy get an attack. Now, Orange Cassidy wins his billionth match over there in AEW. And Kyle O'Reilly, I mean, he's just leaving. And all of a sudden, the kingdom, I don't even know where these motherfuckers went. Like, they were just gone, too. So I thought that was weird. And I was just like, is something else going to happen? Because we had like two, three minutes before the show is, is supposed to be off the air. And then here comes the Usher board, uh, Kyle Fletcher and um, Deacon Beretta. They come and they attack um, Orange Cassidy. And I was just like, okay, this could have been a moment for a Kyle O'Reilly. But okay, let's see what y'all got going on. They ended up beating on him. And then Kyle O'Reilly, who's already walking out, he looks back and he's feeling bad for Orange Cassidy. Why are you feeling bad for him? Let him get attacked. This got nothing to do with you, Kyle. Um, you know, th better things happen in life when you mind your business. But he goes on in over there and he's helping Orange Cassidy. And yes, he gets his ass stomped out. Uncle Don is over there too, pretty much calling this whole circus and everything. But then here comes Chris Statlander who comes to get involved too. And then Willow Nightingale comes out and gets involved too. And we have to keep this in mind that Tony Khan did uh, mention at the media screen for Double or Nothing how, you know, he's interested in doing the whole intergender tag thing. Um, and I thought that that was interesting. So now we're seeing a situation where Orange Cassidy finally got a friend and that's Willow Nightingale. And then we have 
uh, Chris Statlander, who was standing tall, kind of, um, with um, Don Callis' family in Stoli, right behind her, obviously. And I'm just saying, okay, I like how this looks, but at the same time, I really thought that it was it didn't feel like a strong finish for me. The Kyle O'Reilly thing with the kingdom would have probably been a better uh, way to end off the show, I think. And you really look at how Kyle O'Reilly has been putting out really great matches since he's been back from his injury, but taking a lot of L's. That would have been a great opportunity for Kyle to turn heel and join that group. Um, I think that would have really helped him. But, of course, Orange Cassidy is the main focus once again. And, you know, I, I guess that's okay. The show was all right. The live stream that we had uh, where I uh, did a watch along with Martina, that felt better. It always feels better when we're all together and talking about wrestling, having a great time. I, I Like I said, the show, not bad, but I wish the ending was a little bit stronger. It really was nice to see Chris Statlander standing there with Uncle Don and them. And I was just like, oh, she really looked like she fit in. And um, Kyle Fletcher... And Trent Beretta, they were all in black. And I'm just like, I like this look. It has a really nice look to it. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I, I, don't, I don't know. Tony Khan, I was kind of bored tonight. We can do better. Next week is the one-year anniversary of Collision. And I'm looking at it. I'm just like, are, are you serious? One year? It's been one year. It really doesn't even feel like it. Um, but hey, let's see what we got. The only thing I think they mentioned other than Lee Moriarty going against Dante Martin for the TNT qualifying ladder match, um, we do have <laughs> Father's Day weekend next week. And we have a celebration for our stepdaddy, Christian. And I'm just like, this is quality entertainment. This is what I'm talking about, Tony Khan. When I say I'm bored and I want to be entertained, that's what I'm looking for. A Father's Day celebration for our stepdaddy, Christian. That I can totally get behind. Guys, thanks so much for watching my review. I'll be back on Wednesday with Dynamite. And oh, Who Kills WCW review Tuesday. See you guys then. Bye.